Happy Sabbath, everyone. I am blessed. I am blessed every day of my life. I am blessed. At this, thank you for blessing our worship, enhancing this place. Right now, we can have the benediction and just go home. When I wake up in the morning feeling stressed, I simply remember I am blessed. All of my good days outweigh my bad days, so I'm not standing up here to complain. See, the tabernacle, it is the best church family to have, and I love you all so much. From a little kid, you've nurtured me to stand right here. That's why I didn't have an introduction. Most of you know who I am. Amen. To my mom, the best mom that there is. Amen. And my family, my husband, my son, my sister, all of them that are watching. I praise the Lord for all of you. Amen. You may wonder if your life is in despair right now. Right. You may wonder why you just, am I existing? You may wonder and say, God, when is it my turn? You may wonder and say, do I have enough faith to hold on? But I'm going to give you something for you to hold on today to. Faith places you where only God can take you. Faith places you where only God can take you. Let us bow our heads. How great thou art. It's only you, God, not me. So speak for me, speak with me, speak through me. That somebody's life who's thinking about giving it up, someone who says no more, I just don't have any more faith to go on. Somebody, oh God, who needs a breakthrough, you will come divinely and boldly and speak through them. Yes, yes. Dear Jesus, forgive us of all our sins. And when we are done, let it be a great time in the house of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Church, I need you to say this with me because this is a participating sermon. So it won't be too quiet in here. When I speak to you, you will speak back. And the energy will transform this place. Because I don't like a dead church. I'm going to tell you. I got enough going on in work and everywhere, and I got some lively stuff going on, even with drama. So when I come to church, I want to be excited. Because when you walk through these doors, all your problems go to Jesus Christ. So you don't want to be in here depressed. You want to come here blessed. So wake up. All right. Let me tell you something. God designed me. Repeat this. God designed me. God created me. God blessed me. God heals me. God defends me. God restores me. God forgives me. God loves me. God will sustain me. All he, wants, all he wants, all he wants, is for me to have faith in him. Amen. What is faith? Hebrews 11 verse 1 would tell you, faith is something hoped for, but not always seen. But all of us that know a little better, we're going to go a little deeper. Faith is not something hoped for, but not only seen, but knowing that somebody is working behind the scenes. Since a couple of days learning that I was going to preach, I had to be quick. I have interviewed some people about the word faith, breaking down by letters F-A-I-T-H. You can say amen or praise the Lord if you agree with what some of these words mean. The first person you interview is a child. See, children just get right to the point. They just tell you what they think you should hear because this is what they come from, their heart. That's how they speak. So I interviewed this seven-year-old girl this week, Wednesday evening, 
And I said, what does faith mean? F-A-I-T-H. She says, food all the time in their home. He then flipped the script 
same enemies got harmed by their own destructive path. What a mighty God that we serve. The second story is about the woman who washed Jesus' feet. This is a sinful woman with a poor reputation. She probably spent a year's worth of salary though on this alabaster job. Just trying to piece her broken life together. Worst of all, she was rejected for being invited to dinner by a Pharisee who only wanted to see Jesus. She would pour this perfume all over Jesus' feet and wash his feet with tears in her eyes. Her act of faith was moved by her act of love and sacrifice. Jesus said to her, your faith saved you, now go. A third story is about the repentant thief, which hung next to Jesus, found in Luke 23. So he was a thief for most of his life. That is the lifestyle he knew. But there was something about this man that spoke to Jesus, which gave him an opportunity to exercise faith and declare Christ innocent and turn his partner in. He would repent by the words, remember me Lord, when you come into your kingdom, Christ responded, truly you would be in paradise with me. These two stories gave people chances who the world or society would have written off just by their reputation alone. They would be condemned because of their lifestyle. But we serve a God. What we serve a God. We serve a God that looks beyond our faults. Oh my goodness. And sees our needs. Better yet. Better yet. When society or people reject you. No. God has selected you. He will direct you. And resurrect you. Their negativity will not. Point 
them to the God that you know. Fortunately, this man's story is about to change. He's being pruned and groomed to get ready to be a fruitful witness. But he's right where he needs to be. His situation will be changed when his heart is first changed. What did I say? His situation will be changed when his heart is first changed. For this man, a new everything is a coming. But being carried to Jesus had a big challenge. How to get this man through a crowded room. These men had to lower him through a roof. <coughs> to get ahead of a crowd to see Jesus. These are some faithful friends. Let me tell you. So he was carried on this long journey. Lowered through a roof. But what comes next makes him a faith and a success story. You will shout glory, hallelujah. Let me tell you, the man who was carried in, unable to walk, God changed his heart, increased his faith, forgave his sins, and told him, hold on, and told him, drop that thing that you came in with. No pain, no hover around, no crutch. Take up that bed. Take up that bed. Get up, get up, get up, and walk. Amen. Now he went from dependent faith to independent faith. He can preach. He can walk and tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. So for those of you who know me, I always have a personal side to my sermon. Right. Because I gotta make it personal. Yes, yes. And there's some young people that need to hear this one right here. To really show the title which plays you, faith places you only where God can take you. Yeah. So young people, cyberspace or in church, anybody going through this, this one is for you. Many years ago, without telling you my age, I was a senior in college, doing well in school, active in my church, teaching young people Sabbath school, and so on. I went right to Lehman College, right there. I was carrying 21 credits in school just to get out. But I had this professor named Angle, what well, she pronounces it, Angel. Fan. <laughs> she was the one who could make you or break you. You know you have some professors, trust me. Bill? Yeah? You have some professors that he's a boy. If I get in your shoes. Sadly, most of my day was spent in this woman's class. 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. That's a long time to be with somebody you're not sure of. <laughs> I was doing well in her class though, and I was assigned, we were assigned internships at the hospital. Everybody except me, that is. I asked, why can't I do the internship? She said, my course load is too heavy. Now she assigned my course load, and then she's gonna tell me it's too heavy. And she told me I have no spare time to do anything. I only have an hour break between all of my classes from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. But I asked her if we start now, and the month is February, I can do it. She said, no. So everybody got to do it except me. I kept asking her, I said, I'm willing, I want to try, I want to try. She says, no. You're not going to make it on time to my class. You see, I was the foreman of the class. And I did all the weights and measured and measured everything so the ingredients would be fine. So I had to be there a little earlier than everybody. I had to be there for 3.45, not 4. So everybody got to take this internship. And they came late to her class and she didn't mind. And I said, well, why? I asked again. 
She said, no. I said, Lord, I'm so frustrated. I want to get out of school already. I have no money. I want to go work. I want my mom to see her first child graduate. Lord, help me. God said, wait. I questioned him. And I said, the longer I wait, God, I won't graduate. Don't we do that sometimes? Don't we do that? He said, I don't believe you. My young Sabbath school teacher, you teach your children to put their life in my hands, so I need you to be an example. You see what God told me? You see how deep that is? I prayed again, but this time I speak with more confidence. See, that's why I'm a bold speaker. Lord, do what only you can do. Hold on, let me go again. Lord, do what only you can do, exclamation point. Lord said, great, you're ready for your faith to take you somewhere. God said, buckle up your seatbelt. It's going to be an adventure to the finish line. God opened a door for me in late April. Now, everybody else was finished with this internship. And I'm starting by in the end of April. And I've got 100 hours to do. And no time in my schedule. But, you see the God I serve? Yes, sir. The God I serve knows what I need where before I need it. So when he told me no, he was working things out for my good. He was working things out. So when I see it, I'm going to say, glory! Yes, you ready for what he did for me? Let me show you. You see, the internship was in Riverdale. And it takes a long time for you to get on the bus. And the bus does whatever he does, has his break or whatever. So I needed something that I wouldn't be late to this lady's class. So you know what the Lord did for me? Somebody gonna shout glory right now. The Lord opened a door right next door to the school. The Lord opened a door right next door to the school.
in the journal something about Sabbath to begin. I will end my quotes. Far from all here, we hail the Sabbath morning. Holy Sabbath day of rest. Safely through another week. Huh? Don't forget the Sabbath. Don't forget.
with Jesus, the Lord, and the angels, and all of us that made it are having this Sabbath school with no ends, and we're not tired because we are changed people. Amen. Give him your all.
this message was made to encourage us to hold on. And some of us that have a hard time holding on, I'm here to tell you your breakthrough is coming. But it's only going to come through Jesus Christ. It's time to stop playing church. Amen. I've been ready to pay well. People who love the Lord enough that they don't want to live a day without him. Amen. Now on eternity. Amen. So if you heard God's voice speaking to you, or maybe you just need to recommit your life to him, come forward and you can stand in unison with God. wanted me to preach today. Some reason. So God, we thank you for your divine appointments. So Lord, as we're about to pray, dear God, people are coming all over and want to hear your voice because they know they have faults. We all have faults, God. But you're looking beyond those faults, dear Jesus. And you're looking in our hearts that really love you, yes. that want to serve you. Yes. And you're going to make them serve you. Because we need you, Lord. Yes, we can't do it by ourselves. Yes. So, Lord, remember your people who are gathered at this altar. Yes. For whatever need they have, they might have been thinking about giving up because they don't see the purpose. But, Lord, you've given them a purpose for some reason. So dear Jesus, come by their hearts, come by their spirits, that they won't be broken but unbreakable. Dear God, those that are shaking and feel like there's nothing to live for, dear God, shake them and hold them so they'll be unshakable people. Dear Lord, me as a young person, I remember a church so full Dear God, but I want to stand for you no matter what's going on in my life. So Lord, hover me with those angels that's been watching over me. Dear God, keep me. Keep me faithful. Because I want to see you, Jesus. I want to see what you look like. I don't want to miss it. Lord, take care of every young person. Find the enemy from them. That he won't try to snatch them and distract them. But oh God, let us keep our eyes focused on you, Jesus. Bless this church. Bless this leadership. That you will anoint it with power. That we will be testimonies that we speak by our lifestyle, Jesus. So people will come in because they see true people witnessing. Bless that effort. Bless everything we're doing. Forgive us of our sins and save every one of us. That nobody under the sound of my voice will be lost, dear Jesus. So do for them only what you can do. Dear God, save them and keep them in your care and keep them healthy as they go on their daily journey. But a day with you is sweeter every 
every day. We thank you, oh God, for your power. We thank you for your blessings. We take nothing for granted. Heal us and set us free and break all our chains. In Jesus' name we pray.
Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Father God, we thank you so much for allowing us to come here today and really be in your presence, Lord God. Your word reminds us that in your presence is fullness of joy. Your word tells us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So we thank you, Lord God, and we ask that as we leave here today, that we would leave with your strength. Please teach us, Lord God, that we do not have to wait till today to get this refreshing, Lord God. Please help us to walk with you this week in a way that we never have before. Help us to draw closer to you, Lord God. Please increase our faith, increase our love, increase our peace, increase your presence and your nature dwelling within us, Lord God. Let it be seen, Lord God. Give us a peace that goes beyond all understanding as we strive to keep our eyes fixed upon you. We thank you so much, Lord God, for hearing us. Wash us and cleanse us, we pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. And I want to remind everyone who is going to distribute tracts that um, everyone is gathering in the multi-purpose room with Elder Ann's song before you go out. And additionally, there will be soup for everyone after they come back in the Agape Fellowship Hall. Brother Campbell and I prepared soup for everyone after the tracks.